All right, so we know how to compute scalar path integrals, adding up scalar values along a path. What comes next is vector path integrals. What do we mean by that? With a vector path integral, there's some underlying vector field, some vector field that is in the background. If you have a path that is moving through that vector field, then there are a number of ways that one can assign numerical data to the path. For example, how close to parallel are the tangent vectors to the curve and the vectors in the vector field, or how orthogonal are they? In general, what's the angle between the vectors in the vector field and the tangent vectors to your path? This is going to be at the heart of path integrals associated to vector fields. Now, why do we want to do this? Is this physical at all? Are there good reasons for this? Oh yes, absolutely. One really good class of examples comes from computing the work associated to a path moving through a vector field. Let's say a, a, a vector field of forces. Maybe you're an object that's trying to fly against the wind and the wind is blowing, something like that. How much work do you have to do to overcome that? Or if you have, let's say, a pollutant that is flowing across a surface, say on the water, then that movement is by some vector field. To compute how much pollutant is moving across a boundary, a curve, you are going to want to compute a vector path integral, something associated with flux. Or let's say that your path is circular in nature and you want to know how much spin is associated to the vector field along that loop. That sort of net spin or winding is going to be again related to a vector path integral. That's what we're going to focus on next.